Hello, my name is Jake and I'm developing a game called Songs of Six. I've been showing this off uh, recently and I've been getting uh, some questions on the technical aspects of it because um, it stands out a little bit, I'd like to think at least, in that it's a base builder that can uh, that has a very big scale where you can have uh, 30,000 uh, individuals on the same map. And um, I thought I'd give it a try and see if anyone's interested. Um, I haven't prepared anything, so it's, I'm going to be a little a bit uh, flimsy and I'm going to stutter and I'm going to say the wrong things, but I hope you, you don't mind too much. So I'm going to start by uh, showing you uh, the basics of uh, pathfinding the way I, I see it at least. And um, we're gonna exa I'm going to examine, show you something called uh, flood filling, which is um, what what what's used mostly when finding paths. And uh, this is a, a big grid of uh, tiles, as you call, as I call them. A tile is a little square, and the grid is uh, all of these squares. And we have about um, two hundred thousand th uh, tiles here, I think which is, every single one of those is a potential path or part of a path. So the problem, uh, you need to find, uh, you have a starting position, let's say it's a trade caravan or something. Oh, a moment. You have a starting position, let's put the starting position here. Uh, it could be a caravan, could be an army or something like that. And let's say it's it wants to move here because that's that's your city which is going to it's going to conquer or something like that. Uh, and uh, now we're going to find the path the the best path because we don't want it walking strangely or <coughs> ineffectively. We want to make it walk uh, as natural as possible. <coughs> Excuse me, my voice uh, ran out. Not a good sign. <coughs> So, uh, let's employ the path the sorry the flood filling algorithm, and um, you need uh, basically one thing for that, which is a, a queue or a collection. Imagine it as a, a sack where you can put uh, tiles in a, a paper bag or something. Uh, so what you do is you take your starting position, you put it in your bag, and you reach down inside the bag. Uh, well, sorry, uh, the, the algorithm goes like this. Reach down in the bag, pick out a tile, visit the tile, and uh, uh, then iterate through all the, all, all the neighboring tiles and see, can I walk from this tile to this tile? And if you can, put those tiles into the sack or the paper bag. So that's what we do here. We take the, the, we take the starting position, iterate through the surrounding tiles, and put them in the bag, and we mark them as we we've, we've checked these these tiles, and then you uh, do it all over again. So you pick up the another tile from the bag, which could be this one, and you visit the neighbors. <coughs> you might also want to uh, to allow for diagonal movement in case you do. You add these two, and you just repeat doing this, and it's going to look like uh, you're pouring water on uh, on the map and uh, the water floods and fills the map, like this. And if you do this consistently, you're, gonna, you're going to uh, reach your destination, wherever it was uh, over here, eventually, right? But as you can see, we've uh, examined, examined a lot, a lot of tiles here. We wasted a lot of water, which equals computational power. So, uh, <coughs> An optimization to this is something called A star, which I'll show you too. Just gonna fix this a bit. Uh, so I should uh, uh, elaborate on the bag thing. The thing with the bag is that uh, it should be should be what's known as a priority queue, which means that if I put something in, I can assign a value to it, and <laughs> when I grab something from the sack, it's gonna I'm, the first thing I'm going to grab is the, the one thing with the highest or the lowest value. Uh, <coughs> there are many implementations of priority queues. I personally use a black and white tree, it's called. Sorry, my, my voice is completely gone now. <coughs> there we go. <coughs> so, uh, 
So um, that's what I use. You can look that up and uh, uh, in detail if you like. It's not really necessary. Most uh, languages they come with a, a standard library that has priority queues. But uh, what I wanted to say was that uh, you assign a value every time you uh, you examine a tile or uh, every time you uh, push a tile into your collection. You assign the value, and the value is uh, the distance from the starting position. Um, which means that, uh, flood, um, well, it means that the flood filling works. You, sorry, um, you can look that up too, I guess. Um, I'm getting uh, a bit confused here myself. You should know that I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm far from a genius, but that's encouraging because um, I think that if I can do this, then uh, basically everyone can, maybe even lesser primates. But anyway, uh, A star. Imagine that you um, you do the, uh, the the flood filling, but that you tilt the map towards the um, the destination, so <coughs> water will flow towards that uh, direction, and uh, that will look something like this. Instead of doing a circle like this, it's gonna start fl flowing towards the destination like this. And we found the destination. <coughs> As you can see, a lot less water has been used, and that saves us a bunch of uh, computational power. But even if you do it on this, on a relatively big map such as this, you're not going to be able to do more than 100 per second. And that's, that wasn't enough in my case. So I have employed a technique called HPA. I don't really know what it stands for, but you can look that up. It's surprisingly uh, unknown, actually. I found it uh, on, a, on a YouTube uh, video. Some professor uh, having a talk, just... Uh... But uh, maybe there's some information about it. But I'm gonna um, contribute by, by uh, explaining how I did it, how I implemented it. I didn't come up with it myself, I want to stress that. Um, but I did... I did an implementation. Okay, so uh, the first thing you need to do uh, is that you take your uh, your tile grid, which is your whole map, and you pre-process it, and you divide uh, the tiles into bigger chunks. So uh, you lay uh, an abstract layer. Well, you create an abstract layer of much bigger tiles on top of the small tiles. And uh, to me, that looks like this. <coughs> Here we go. These are my bigger tiles, my components as I call them. And uh, uh, you need to keep track of each component and uh, which its neighbors are. Uh, so this, this component here obviously has a neighbor here, 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 and here, and here, here, and here, and here, if you allow for diagonal movement, which I do. Um, so. Now that I have this big grid, sorry, instead of, uh, say that this little dude wants to go to the bathroom, and the bathroom is way over here, I can do a flood filler A star here. It's going to take a lot of, a lot of um, uh, tiles and com compute, computational power, uh, obviously. Uh, but uh, using this uh, abstract grid, we can narrow the search down, so to speak. <coughs> because first we can find a path uh, in this big grid here. And as you can see, going all the way here could require uh, hundreds of thousands of tiles if you do them on the, on the level 1 detail. But uh, on this grid, it only requires 1, 2, 3, maybe uh, 50 tiles or hundred <coughs> <coughs> so you save you save the computational power uh, by a magnitude of a uh, hundred or more um, yeah um, I, ha I have a cold as you as you might notice but I um, hope you don't mind too much I'm not infectious through the internet my son gave it to me in case you wonder uh, so uh, First you do the abstract path, and uh, that will result in a path uh, something like this. 
maybe five or six or seven uh, big chunks. And then when you, you obviously need the detail path too, uh, but the good thing here is that uh, you can now narrow down the search because you don't need to search the, the other big chunks here. You can narrow it down to these five chunks when you're searching for the path. And that, um, that increases the speed a lot. Um, so that's what I do. A pro there are a few problems with this, a few drawbacks. First, you need to cache. You need to process this state and keep it up to date as your, uh, as your map changes and obstacles appear and disappear. Uh, I also keep track of everything that's within this tile that, uh, that, a, that a subject, as I call them, would want to use or walk to. Uh, and that's represented here uh, in something that I only I I think only I will understand. But you can see, um, <coughs> for instance, this uh, this two here. It says that on the entire grid I have two two chunks that have stone in them, and those would be this chunk and this chunk because we have stone here. And you can see those are marked. Yeah, this one has two piles of stone because it has stone here and it neighbors one that has stone and this one has two stones as well so that's how it works and it's a it's a pain in the ass to keep this up to date I'll tell you there's a lot of bugs it doesn't come for free the second drawback is that um, it's it doesn't guarantee perfect paths sometimes uh, the, the little ones can take paths that are really weird but um, most of the time they take a, a good path or a, a path that is uh, human so to speak so you don't want the optimal path, I don't think so, if you're, if you're making a, a simulation of real life, which is good. Uh, <clears throat> I bet you have a lot of questions, maybe. I hope you do. And I'll be glad to uh, dwell deeper into things and explain them uh, a bit more. But uh, that's basically what I wanted to say. I can show you how it works in action. Uh, nothing here. Um, one moment. I'll show you Pro RT's uh, city here, which is a city with uh, 8,000 people in it, and they're all uh, finding paths all the time. And uh, as you can see here, here they are. And uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that um, since the map is changing um, a lot, another benefit of using HPA is that you don't need to find find the whole path, the whole detailed path. You have to find the whole uh, abstract path, uh, but then you only need to find the detailed path from, from the first uh, component to the second. And that's very beneficial because it saves us a lot of time when the map, as you know, is changing uh, constantly. And uh, if I were to find the whole path, uh, and then suddenly I build a, a, an obstacle on the path, which happens, then that path will be wasted and I need to find a new full path. On, uh, in this I, I find a shorter path, as, as you can see here. This dude doesn't know what he's, where he's going, this dude. He only knows he's go Let me pause. This guy, this guy, my son is getting impatient now. This guy, he, uh, he, saw, he only knows he's going to walk over here, which is... Uh, at the border of, a, of, a, of another component. Let me show you. Um, yeah, so he, he knows he's going to walk through this component and over here. And once he's here, he can search for the next path to the next component to his final destination. So that's very good. No path, little, little computation is wasted on the pathfinder. Uh, yeah, now I'm finished, I think. Uh, I hope you have questions. If you want me to continue doing this, uh, please let me know. 